Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. We've come to the right place. If we want to have all our spiritual needs met, it is found in the gospel and found in Jesus Christ. Blessed are we to hear what we hear from Jesus. His words are spirit and they are life. May God bless us as we've gathered in his house today. We'll begin with hymn 394. <laughs> Exodus chapter 17, where we see God's people complaining as usual, grumbling against the Lord, not trusting the Lord to keep his word. 
May God help us to keep to trust in him. The entire Israelite community set out on their journey from the wilderness of sin, as the Lord had commanded. They camped at Rephidim, but there was no water for the people to drink. So the people quarreled with Moses and said, Give us water to drink. Moses said to them, Why are you quarreling with me? Why are you testing the Lord? The people were thirsty for water there, so they grumbled against Moses. They said, Why did you ever bring us up out of Egypt to let us, our children, and our livestock die of thirst? Moses cried out to the Lord, What shall I do with these people? They are almost ready to stone me. The Lord said to Moses, Go in front of the people and take the elders of Israel with you. Also take in your hand the staff with which you struck the Nile and go. Watch me. I will stand there in front of you on the rock in Horeb. You are to strike the rock. Water will come out of it, and the people will drink. Moses did that in the sight of the elders of Israel. He named the place Massa and Meribah, because the Israelites quarreled, and because they tested the Lord by saying, Is the Lord among us or not? This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm for today is <laughs> Psalm 95, a psalm in which we're reminded to worship the Lord, and there is a warning in this psalm that what will happen if we do not. The psalm is found in the Grace Psalter. We join in singing Psalm 95C. Stand. 
we rejoice confidently on the basis of our hope for the glory of God. Not only this, but we also rejoice confidently in our sufferings, because we know that suffering produces patient endurance, patient endurance produces tested character, and tested character produces hope, and hope will not put us to shame, because God's love has been poured out into our hearts by the Holy Spirit, who was given to us. For at the appointed time, while we were still helpless, Christ died for the ungodly. It is rare indeed that someone will die for a righteous person. Perhaps someone might actually go so far as to die for a person who has been good to him. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise for the reading of the Gospel. The Gospel reading will also serve as the basis of the sermon. We listen to the Gospel of John chapter 4. So Jesus came to a town in Samaria called Sychar, near the piece of land Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there. Then Jesus, being tired from the journey, sat down by the well. It was about the sixth hour. A woman from Samaria came to draw water. Jesus said to her, Give me a drink. His disciples had gone into town to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, How is it that you, a Jew, ask for a drink from me, a Samaritan woman? For Jews do not associate with Samaritans. Jesus answered her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is that is saying to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. Sir, she said, you don't even have a bucket, and the well is deep. So where do you get this living water? You are not greater than our father Jacob, are you? He gave us this well and drank from it himself, as did his sons and his animals. Jesus answered her, Everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again, but whoever drinks the water I will give him will never be thirsty ever again. Rather, the water I will give him will become in him a spring of water, bubbling up to eternal life. Sir, give me this water, the woman said to him. So I won't get thirsty and have to keep coming here to draw water. Jesus told her, go call your husband and come back here. I have no husband, the woman answered. Jesus said to her, you are right when you say, I have no husband. In fact, you have had five husbands, and the man you have now is not your husband. What you have said is true. Sir, the woman replied, I see that you are a prophet. Our fathers worshipped on this mountain, but you Jews insist that the place where we must worship is in Jerusalem. Jesus said to her, Believe me, woman, a time is coming when you will not worship the Father on this mountain or in Jerusalem. You Samaritans worship what you do not know. We worship what we do know, because salvation is from the Jews. But a time is coming and now is here. When the real worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For those are the kind of worshipers the Father seeks. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. The woman said to him, I know that Messiah is coming, the one called Christ. When he comes, he will explain everything to us. Jesus said to her, I, the one speaking to you, and he. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, O Christ. Please be seated for our next hymn.
Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Amen. God's word for our encouragement today is the gospel lesson as it has been read from the Gospel of John, chapter 4. Dear friends, when you see a commercial on TV that promises this is the only thing you'll need in life, this will last your whole life, Red flags go up immediately for you and you think, all right, this is too good of a deal. You're just trying to sell me on something that, well, I may enjoy for a while, but I'm not foolish. I live in this world and I see everything is temporary. Our Lord Jesus comes before us today and has a great deal. He says, I come to you with a gift. I come to you with a gift of living water. You drink it, you'll never be thirsty ever again. Seems like a deal too good to be true. But since this is coming from our Lord, who does not lie, we understand that what he is offering, I should say, we understand by the Holy Spirit, what, we, what he is offering it is eternal life. And how good it is then to receive from Jesus this gift of living water that quenches our soul's thirst and helps us every day to worship the Lord both in spirit and in truth. The neat thing about this story, which and it's not in our text, but in the verse just before it, it says that Jesus had to go through Samaria. So there's Galilee to the north, Judah to the south, and Jesus is traveling to Jerusalem. He didn't have to go through Samaria. Most people avoided Samaria, most Jews did. Because in that area of Samaria, was a mixture of Jews that had intermarried with pagan, with Gentiles. They didn't really worship the one true God. They followed a lot of traditions. They had some strange ideas. But Jesus, it says, had to go through Samaria. Why? text shows us it was, at least in part, to talk to this individual, this woman, this Samaritan woman. And also in part then, to relay his message of salvation to her community, to the town that she came from. When you think about it, this is why Jesus had to come into this world, too. To seek and to save us all who were lost. Jesus, we find out, is tired from his journey, so that shows us he's just like us in every way. He's also thirsty. He stops at a, a famous landmark, one that the Samaritans took great pride in. This was the well, this was the piece of land that Jacob had given as a gift to his son, Joseph. And so this kind of became a shrine, a holy place, where people probably thought that in drinking this water, I'm going to receive some kind of benefit from God. Jesus asked this woman for water, which surprised her, as our text tells us, Jews do not associate with Samaritans because they're unclean. But Jesus did. And Jesus then told this woman, if you know the gift and who it is that asks you for a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. The woman was confused. How can you, you don't have a bucket, this is a deep well, how are you going to give me 
a special kind of water, a living water that's going to bring special benefits from God. Are you greater than Jacob? Jacob, the same guy that deceived his father to take an inheritance, the conniver Jacob, the one who played favoritism with his sons, Joseph and then Benjamin, was he so great? Sadly, that's what mankind does. They take these people and make them to be their gods, their idols, and worship them. For the Israelites, it was Abraham, the Samaritan, because Jacob had bought this piece of land in their area. It was Jacob. Are you greater than Jacob? She obviously didn't know who she's talking to. Jesus, the Christ, the one who gives living water, like he says, if you drink of this water that I'm going to give you, you're never going to be thirsty ever again. It will well up in you continuously as a spring, and it will give you eternal life. It sounded too good to be true. But she was interested. She said, sir, give me this water. It will make my life so much easier. I won't have to journey here in the heat of the day for myself, for my animals. Give me this water. So Jesus showed this woman he had some special gift to give her, and she needed that gift. What specifically, though, was this gift that Jesus was offering her? Living water. He wasn't about to send down a bucket deeper into the well and get some of the more holy water. The living water he was going to give comes from his word and by his Holy Spirit, the gospel. In pointing out, as he will very soon, he's going to point out, I'm the Christ, the one you're waiting for. In doing that, that satisfies all the soul's needs. In saying, I am Jesus, the way, the truth, and the life, you come to the Father through me. Heaven is open, there's peace, there's joy, there's hope, as Paul talked about in his letter to the Romans. All of this comes from my words I'm giving to you. Peter understood that too when he said, to whom else will we go, Lord? You have the words that are spirit and they are life. Dear friends, as Jesus made a specific trip to see this woman and to see this community in Samaria, so the Lord came into this world. So the Lord has come to you personally. He's come to you through word and through sacrament. He's come to you offering great things. The angels remind you of the great joy that is yours because Jesus is the Christ, the Savior. In baptism, you are given and offered the forgiveness of sins, clothed in Christ's righteousness. In the Lord's Supper, Jesus says, Take any, this is my body, my blood given for you, for the forgiveness of your sins. Does it seem too good to be true? It does. Everything in this world seems to have a catch. And the devil likes to, to lead us to doubt what Jesus is offering, what God offers us. Living water that quenches your thirst, simply trusting in Jesus for your salvation. No, you need to do more. <coughs> the devil, the sinful pride in us, leads us to say, this water isn't enough that to get to eternal life, I must do this, and I must do that, and I must be perfect. But that's the kind of drawing of water that Jesus says, you're still going to be thirsty. If you seek eternal life by your own doing, by your own choosing, by your own works, you will be thirsty.
university. You will not have the guarantee of eternal life. You will not have the peace and joy knowing your sins are forgiven. This comes as a gift from Jesus. Through his word and sacrament says, Here am I, your Savior. So, dear friends, may we not overlook this gift, the word of life given to us, for us to read and to listen to. Let us gladly come to God's house, let us gladly sit at God's feet and learn of him who is our Savior. Because by listening to him, our soul's thirst is completely quenched. Our Lord Jesus had graciously come to this woman to offer her the gift of eternal life. Jesus now, in order to emphasize you do need a Savior, told this woman, now go back and get your husband, bring him here. She says, I don't have a husband. Jesus shows himself to be all-knowing. No, you don't have a husband. You have had five husbands, and the man you're with now is not your husband. Jesus, the all-knowing Son of God, has shown her, you have failed just like all people failed in being perfect. This woman realizes, he knows my sin, and I feel uncomfortable about this. You must be a prophet be hoping that by calling in this polite term, this um, these words of praise, maybe he'll just overlook it and forgive. But understanding he has a special knowledge, this woman asked Jesus, where should we worship the Lord? I've been brought up as a Samaritan to worship the Lord on Mount Gerizim, a very holy place. That's where we talk to God. You Jews go to Jerusalem and say they're on Zion. That's where you should worship the Lord, because God is there. That's his house. Where should we worship? Jesus taught this woman very graciously and patiently, saying it's not a matter of where matter of how. He said, you Samaritans worship what you do not know. We Jews worship what we do know. Salvation is from the Jews. That truth Jesus was reminding her of was, you, you hold to Jacob? You hold to Abraham? Well, they were all looking for the coming of the Christ. He would be coming from the line of the Jews, from the line of David, right? Certainly, salvation does come from the Jews because it comes only through Jesus. And then Jesus said, A time is coming, and now is here, when the real worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. All of a sudden, Jesus is mentioning people will worship the Father. Where are people going to come up with this idea that God, who is the creator and judge of all, is their Father? They're going to come up with this only through the Gospel. That God has reconciled all people to himself through Christ. That in baptism, God makes people, sinners though they are, to be his children, his heirs of heaven. It's God's doing to create these, his children, through word and through sacrament. And these are the kinds of worshipers that God delights in. People that are all about glorifying God, and they do so not because of some special power of theirs, but because of the Holy Spirit who reminds them, confess your sins before the Lord, and trust in Him alone for His grace and mercy. 
These are the kinds of worshipers the Father seeks. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. Dear friends, this is why Jesus has come to us in word and in sacrament, so we can worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. Apart from God's word, we can't do anything that would please our God. Apart from faith in Christ, we cannot bear any fruits. We, mankind, would come up with our own work righteousness, how we could get to heaven. But no, Jesus makes it perfectly clear. This is my gift. I give you living water, my word. The Holy Spirit wells up in you the gift of faith, and you have eternal life. You'll never be thirsty. Your soul is quenched. Someday in heaven, there you won't need to eat or drink because you're never going to be thirsty or hungry ever again. Seems too good to be true. But it's not. Because our Lord Jesus is faithful and true. He keeps his word and does not lie. And so he offers you and me a gift. Living water. Drink this water in every day. It quenches your soul's thirst, reminding you you have heaven. And it also strengthens you and equips you so that you, with a righteous and thankful heart, worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. May God help us to drink this water every day. Amen. Please rise. The peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard you and keep you in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. We continue with our confession of faith. We use the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please remain standing now as our thank offering is brought before the Lord. Gracious Lord, we thank you for all the blessings you give to us each and every day. We are not worthy of all the gifts you give to us. Help us to honor you by your spirit. Help us to praise your name as our Lord and Savior. And help us to honor you with our wealth, with the blessings you give to us. Use these thank offerings to further the spread of your gospel, both in our community and in places where we cannot go. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Please be seated. We continue with the singing of our next hymn.
responsive prayer printed in the bulletin. Lord, hear my prayer. Listen to my cry for mercy. In your faithfulness and righteousness, come to my relief. Spare us, Lord, from the lies of the devil and the attacks of our conscience. Comfort and save us in your patient compassion. Have mercy on us, Jesus. Guide us, Lord, to the wisdom of your word and the power of your promises. Take away our confusion and doubt. Have mercy on us, Jesus. Hear us, Lord, when we come to you in prayer. Make us confident to take you at your word and to follow you in faith. Have mercy on us, Jesus. Empower us, Lord, to walk in your ways and live in your truth. <coughs> Fill us with your love, that we may love you and one another. Have mercy on us, Jesus. O Lord God, you are the maker of heaven and earth. You watch over your people and protect them from harm and danger. Watch over us, our families and loved ones. Draw us closer to you every day through your word. Watch over our country as well and be with those who serve in our armed forces. Wherever there is unrest, O Lord, bring peace. Wherever there is suffering and sorrow, bring comfort and hope. Wherever there is pain and disease, bring your healing hand and assure your people that all things will work out for the eternal good. We pray especially, dear Heavenly Father, that you would be with your servant, Len Lidby Jr., as his cancer has come back. Lord, give strength to your servant and wisdom to his doctors. Assure him and his family that you are with them to care for them and provide for all their needs. Help them to trust in you and honor you as they bear this cross in their life. Remind them of your never-failing love, which you've proven through your son's own death on the cross. O Holy Spirit, keep us from ever becoming lazy and half-hearted in our worship of you. Move us to search your scriptures diligently and to share your word with one another. Make your kingdom come to us continuously that we may grow in our faith and may be able to bear whatever trials and hardships may come our way. We ask all these things in Jesus' name. We also pray the prayer he has taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless us and keep us. Amen. Please be seated for our closing hymn.
the Lord that he has given us the blessings of his word, where he assures us he is with us always to work everything out for our good, and he is going to glorify his name at all times. So God be praised for this time he's given us this morning. We'd like to highlight some things. So following church today, uh, we will have the choir's practice. I don't know in what order. I guess we can talk about that. Perhaps the adult choir will sing immediately after, and the kids will go have fellowship, and then come back and sing. Uh, I'm getting some head nods, so that, I guess, is approved. Um, thank you. Uh, next, this coming Wednesday, uh, Pastor Wilby will be here to share God's Word in our Lenten rotation, as well as many friends from our Trinity Lutheran School. Last year, that, Sunday, that Wednesday, we had over 120 people in church. It was packed. Um, and it is good to be together in God's house, and it's great to hear the little children sing their praise. Uh, they will be singing Glory Be to Jesus as a part of our worship. Prior to the worship, it will be a spaghetti supper from 5 to 6. There will be catechism class, uh, maybe more briefly, but there will be catechism class. Uh, the next couple Wednesdays, there won't be catechism. There won't be catechism until after Easter. Um, and just to note then that I will be on vacation uh, starting Thursday, March 16th through Sunday, March 26th. Uh, thank you for this opportunity to take this vacation. Um, the services will all be covered. Pastor Joel Suko is coming from Wausau for the next two Sundays. And then Pastor Wilby this Wednesday, and the next Wednesday, Pastor <coughs> Peter, Peter Plagans from Wisconsin Rapids. Please greet him as he comes and helps out our, our circuit, our rotation. Otherwise, I guess I don't have any other notes. A reminder about the Easter lilies. If you wish to buy one, please sign up and pay uh, Ladies Aid for that. If you want to bring your own to decorate up in front of church for Easter, great. Um, what a special celebration that will be, as we know, Jesus is not dead, but he lives. He lives who once was dead, our Redeemer. That's all the announcements I have. God bless you and keep you as you continue to worship the Lord. <laughs> 